Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome to Dee's Yard. Today I am so excited to finally be sharing a project that I've been working on over my weekends for a while now. A brand new deck in my woodland garden. Today's video will only be on the DIY portion of the deck itself, but I'll have more videos up on the inside layout, gazebo, and electrical wiring if you're interested in those parts as well. I will also have all the tools and most materials used linked down below. Now let's get started. And I know this goes without saying, but be sure to check deed restrictions, local building codes, and zoning laws to make sure your deck complies. Also call 811 before digging to undisturb piping or wiring. First, let's plan the deck and determine how it'll be used. In my case, I know ahead of time the purpose for this deck will be for entertaining as well as holding an 8x8 hot tub or jacuzzi. The hot tub can hold up to 6 adults, so I need a deck that will be able to hold a lot of weight. Simpson Strong Tie has an awesome free deck planner that allowed me to design my dream deck and ensure it will be strong enough for its needs. This program also allows you to choose a cool decking design. Once you're satisfied with your build, you can review a material list and create a report so you can print off everything you need. The next step was the hardest part, at least in my opinion, but the most important part of this whole project. This is a floating deck and is not being attached to a house or ledger, so getting a square deck and footing layout was a challenge. I put together four batter boards with some scrap wood I had laying around and then put them just outside the perimeter corners of the deck. Next, I attach string and move the string until the area is square. For rectangular shape, the corners will be square when the lengths of two diagonals are equal. Now that I've found all four corners of my deck and it's square, it's time to determine where the footings will be. Because I need extra sturdy deck to handle a lot of weight, I need 12 footings, four in three rows. Then just measure in from the batter board corners and mark where to dig. I'm getting all my measurements from the deck plans I created. Holes for footings need to be dug to a depth below the frost line, depending on where you live. I dug 12, each two feet deep. After all the footing holes are dug, I check again to make sure everything is square and the holes line up appropriately. You might not be able to tell on camera, but this area is on a slope, creating uneven land. I opted to get a laser level to help level all the footings before pouring concrete. This step is very important for me, since my beams will be on top of the concrete piers. If you will have posts on top, you can perfect the length later by cutting posts to length. I'm using 12 inch diameter quick tubes and just marking on the tubes where the laser is, showing where to cut. I want the lowest tube sitting at least a couple inches above ground to allow for water runoff. We opted to cut the tubes with a table saw, but you can use a handheld saw also. Now I just place the proper cut tube in the hole, ensure it's level, and I backfill around the tube to hold it in place. Finally it's time to mix and pour concrete. I have a lot of concrete footings, so I borrowed a mixer. If I didn't have the mixer, I would have just mixed the concrete in a wheelbarrow. After getting the proper consistency, I just shovel the concrete in the tube. Before the concrete dried, I grabbed the laser level again and ran a line down the footing row. This helped me line up the 5 8 inch L anchor bolt that later a post base will be on and I make sure it's perfectly square, leaving enough of the bolt above the footing to connect to the post base, about 1 inch. And just a quick tip, try to get all the anchor bolts set before the concrete hardens. I had to use a mallet for one because it was already setting. Once the concrete has cured, I just take a razor and remove the outer tube. The last step on preparing the footings is to screw on the post base on each anchor bolt. 
aligning them according to the deck layout. Now it's time to work on the structural framing of the deck. If you have a taller deck, you would now attach your posts, level, and cut to length. Because my deck is ground level, the beam set is put directly on the post base. My beam set consists of three 2x10s, and they are then screwed together with 4-inch structural wood screws. Next, I attach the beam to the post base using 3.5-inch nails. I invested in a palm nailer for this project, and it was a lifesaver. It's important to nail in each hole on the brackets. Be sure to square your beams prior to nailing in the post base. To finish off the beams, I put deck flashing tape or butyl joist tape on to provide the longevity of the deck's wood substructure since I'm using composite decking boards. Hopefully this prevents rotting and extends the life of the wood. Next time, I'll wait to apply the tape until after all the joists and blocking are complete. Now it's time to install rim joists that make up the deck's perimeter, filled in with joists that support the decking. I'm using 2x10 joists installed 12 inches on center for my decking diagonal design. Otherwise, for composite decking, it's recommended to space joists at least 16 inches on center. I measure and cut joists to length, beam to beam, and then nail in using a joist hanger with 1.5 inch nails, and then 3 inch nails for the toenail. This part is important to ensure the top of the joist is even with the top of the beam. Joists must be level and in plane for a flat surface. If you have a taller deck, you may be installing your joists on top of the deck beams using hurricane brackets instead. Because the design of this deck has a picture frame or border, ladder blocking is installed in between each rim joist and the first inner joist. There will also be a center picture frame design so ladder blocking is added to the two center joists to support the design. Next, a chalk line was snapped down the middle and blocking was added stagger to the line for ease of nailing. This blocking helps prevent any movement in the joists. The last step of the frame is to add self-adhesive flashing tape across the tops of the joists to help prolong the life of them. Now it's time to start laying the decking boards. Again, Simpson Strong Tie Deck Planner helped me with the design and with a good starting point on materials needed. Composite decking is long lasting and low maintenance. We chose Fibron because their decking reflects the beauty of natural and exotic hardwoods. I really like the subtle streaking and varied wood grains. Fibron's line, The Good Life Escapes, has multi-tones and fit perfectly for our budget. And we chose the two colors, Bungalow, used for the picture frame and fascia, and Tuscan Villa used for the outer frame and inner decking. The Escapes collection is not only beautiful, it's also backed by a 30-year performance, stain, and fade warranty. The deck boards come in groove, which is perfect for hidden fasteners, and square, which is perfect for a nice edge. For the outer frame, I'm using Tuscan Villa Square Edge, paired with Fibron's Pro Plug Deck System Hidden Fasteners. This is a great option, because after you drill and set each screw, you just tap in a matching plug for a smooth finish. We laid out the border with our desired overhang, taking in consideration the thickness of the fascia board that will be put on last. The corners are cut at a 45 degree angle for a nice finished look and then screwed in. Next, I worked on the picture frame using a groove board in the color bungalow. The ladder blocking helps support this part. This inner picture frame took some time, but like my husband tells me, measure twice, cut once. Having some clamps really helped me hold down the decking boards while I got the correct measurements. For the diagonal design, I'm using groove decking in the color Tuscan Villa to match the outer border. This step is really just measuring and cutting each board with a proper 45 degree angle cut. I find the easiest way is to cut the first 45 degree cut, lay the board in place, and then cut where the other end meets the picture frame. Because I'm doing a diagonal design and I want an overall smooth and flawless surface, 
I'm using Edge X Hidden Deck Clips. These clips are designed for use on groove edge decking and can be used for any deck pattern. They are super easy to use and make the perfect spacing between each board. You pinch the wings of the clip together and slide the clip into the groove, centering on joists. The clip stays in place until you are ready to fasten. Then place the next board up against the clips and insert fully. Screw down all the clips between the boards. Then just repeat installing fasteners and positioning boards to cover the deck surface. I ended up being short two boards and had to wait for the order to get in. But when doing a special composite order, I prefer to under order versus over order and then be left with too much material that can't be returned. I had my husband pressure wash the deck because while we waited, our new hot tub ended up being delivered. I was so excited and very pleased with how the deck was shaping out to look like. After the last material arrive, I finished up the decking boards and then we installed the gazebo over the deck. I'll have a video up on a review of the 14 by 20 gazebo if you're interested. Next step is install the fascia board. First I cut a 45 degree angle and then put some wood shims under the fascia board to hold it flush to the frame of the deck. The fascia board I'm using is in the color bungalow and matches the picture frame color of the deck. To install the fascia, I'm using Starborn Pro Plug System, which provides the proper screws and plugs to match the board and bungalow. The fascia plug tool set was also required to use the Pro Plug System. I really love how the deck looks with the fascia attached. Now for the last step, stairs. Originally we were planning on attaching a step with stringers to the deck, but opted to do a full length box step instead. First I measured the height I wanted for a step, 7 inches, and then I subtracted the decking board thickness on top and subtracted the fascia board thickness on the front and sides, plus the desired overhang to get the dimensions needed for a frame. I added blocking every 12 inches, just like I did for the joists on the deck. Then I just attached the step frame to 4, 4x4 four four posts that I set in the ground with concrete off camera to create a level step. I then added the leftover joist tape I had to the step frame. I used Square Edge Tuscan Villa for the tread of my step, paired with Pro Plug hidden fasteners that come with plugs. Next I rip a fascia bore on the table saw to get a smaller fascia and then I attach it to the front and sides of the step to serve the purpose of a kicker board. All there's left to do now is plug all the fascia and decking holes for a complete look. I am so happy with this new deck and I'm enjoying it every day. Hopefully this video was helpful and be sure to check out the end product where I include the decor, electrical wiring, and the gazebo and they will all be linked down below. Bye guys.